When developing new recipes, it's important to test them to ensure that they not only make the expected changes, but that they also don't make any unnecessary changes. Let's learn more. A uh, test and rewrite implements rewrite test. That is an interface. So change. And the first thing we're going to do here is there's a method called rewrite run. This is basically directing rewrite to do a recipe execution. And we're going to be able to provide code samples here of you know different kinds of code that that make up a mock project. We're going to use Java's string template functionality here. So three three quotes uh, on each. And notice that if I start writing in here that uh, initially this isn't syntax highlighted, but I can add this language equals Java annotation here or, or uh, comment. And the IDE will start syntax highlighting the contents of this test. Now, this language comment applies, you can kind of put it at any level, right? You can put it on the rewrite run, and that would apply to every string that's part of this method called rewrite run. Or you could apply it to, you know, just this method Java, and it's going to apply to every string that's in that call to Java. The placement of that would be significant depending on what other features we use a little later on, but let's just leave it here for now. So suppose I wanted to test a recipe where I just want to change the list method add to the word plus. So I could start with uh, import job util list here. Right now, the test harness is asserting that there's no change in this Java file because I've only specified one string here. This one string serves as the before state of this class. If I want to test that there's a change, then I can add another string here and make the change. And this will now assert that after you know this test, this rewrite run, after this run, that the word, uh, the method add will be changed to plus. Right now, if I run this test, it's going to fail because I haven't anywhere in this test specified what recipe to even run. So it said recipe is expected to make a change, but no changes. The recipe that's running right now is effectively recipe.nlop. It's just, there's no recipe that's, that's running at all. And so there's two ways I can specify the recipe that's running. I can override this method defaults from rewrite test, and I'm given this recipe spec. And the first thing we'll see on this is I'm able to specify a recipe. And I could say change method name here, Java util list, see our video on this syntax here, which is a bit different. And the word I'm going to change it to is this and yeah, this. Null with recipes usually means you're just accepting whatever the default behavior is, unless it's overridden. So by setting the default recipe, that's now going to be the recipe for every rewrite run in every method throughout the this class. And once I override it, so if I run this again. Yeah, you would see that the test passed now. Mechanism number two. I can define the recipe. I'm going to copy this here. I can also define the recipe on this specific recipe run alone. Um, and notice that the IDE is saying class or interface expected. What does that mean? It really has to do with this language comment right here. It's interpreting the string, this method pattern, as a whole piece of Java code, which of course it isn't valid Java code. So remember earlier we said 
you know, that we could place this language comment down here on the Java method so that it only applies to the arguments of that method. When we do that, then you see the IDE is no longer trying to interpret this method pattern argument as Java code itself, which it isn't, of course. Of course. So that's kind of the significance of why we, you know, we put that comment in one place or the other. So one other thing we can do here in this rewrite run, if we look at the signature, notice that there's an optional spec that's, so we're taking the spec and we're making a modification. And then whether there's a spec or not, there's a var args set of source specs. So Java is a source spec. It's coming from this, you know, assertions class. That kind of leads me to believe that I could define more than one Java file for this test harness to run on. So I can just say comma and I can add another Java file here. And I could call this, you know, class test two. And I could do something very similar here. and maybe prove that a set string doesn't get changed by this. And so notice again how this is syntax highlighted up here, but this is not down here. That's because we have the language comment on this method rather than on the rewrite run method, right? So maybe we move back to this defaults over here. And we can move this back up. And now you see, since we've moved this language comment back up, it, it syntax highlights both. So now this test is actually asserting two things, that this file changes from add to plus, and, and this file does not change because this is a set instead of a list. So part of the beauty of rewrite run um, and being able to specify multiple source files is that they don't have to just be two Java files. You could have a POM XML, for example, here, which is another form of source spec. And the POM XML is going to have be able to take in, you know, the, the normal sort of POM syntax here. Again, notice language equals Java. I want to move this now down to this. I can make a copy of this and put it on the other Java file as well. So you can have multiple of these. I can put one up here and say language equals XML. For POM XML, it's going to help with that. And so this, you know, some recipes are going to be, are going to either modify multiple kinds of source files or they're going to condition their change in say a Java file based on, you know, whether or not there's a dependency in a POM or a property defined in the application YAML or whatever. So this is uh, allowing us to define the, like the structure of this mock project to be more than just, just Java files alone. So we can take this a little bit further even and define not just a POM file and a Java, but a whole, uh, a multi-module Maven project uh, structure. So we can say assertions.project or .maven project here and give it a project name. Like I could say the server project here. And then all of these, uh, these source files I'm going to put under this Maven project. And you could have a situation then where you have a multi-module project um, and test the relationship between them. I could have a core project and a Maven project. Maybe I'll move this Java file up into uh, the core and leave this Java file down here in the server project. I could add yet a bit more structure here and say source main Java. So this is effectively creating a directory structure. And this Java file will now be specifically in the main source set of the core Maven project. And this one down here, I could say is in source 
test Java. So you see some other shortcuts here. We could say uh, source main resources as well. I might be able to, I could define, for example, a YAML file down here where I, I've got spring.application.name set um, to my app. And of course I could put a language comment on this as well so that the IDE syntax highlights this YAML file. So we've got quite a complicated structure now. I've got a multi-module Maven project defined in this unit test with a core sub-project and a server sub-project. I've got um, a source main Java folder with a Java file inside of it. I've got a source main resources with YAML defined inside of it. The LST element for this Java file, um, the test harness is going to add a marker to the top of it, which is Java source set. So Java source set is a marker that the open rewrite parsers will typically add to the top of a file so that you can identify like the source files that came from the main source set versus the same source files that came from the test source set. And some um, recipes will condition their behavior depending on whether a file is in the main or the test source set. You can define, you know, language level and things of that sort as well. This YAML file uh, is an interesting example of something that, you know, in the case of Spring, Spring only interprets a YAML file and source main resources as a Spring application YAML if the file name begins with application and ends in .yaml or .yml. And so how would we force the testing framework to believe that this YAML file had that file name? This is part of the function of spec here on the file level as well. So I can say spec.path application.yaml here. And again, notice that this language equals YAML is applying now to both this string and this string. So. I may want to yet move this down one level further so it only applies to this string and doesn't try to influence this here. This is now how, yeah, so we've basically forced this YAML file to have that particular file name. Note that the spec here, this is the spec that's attached to the file. The one that we used earlier was up here on the run, right? So that's going to have different options. It's going to have like the ability to set the recipe and some other things on it where that's 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 uh, relevant to the run. This spec is something that's uh, modifying the file itself. Let's see what else is on this spec right here. What other kind of things are available? A series of event handlers for for dealing with you know after the recipe, I'm able to get at the actual LST element, the YAML dot documents. Sometimes you want to just make some imperative assertions on the LST after a recipe is ran, maybe to look for markers or something that isn't visible in the printed text of the code. So you can do that. You can also say before recipe, you get access to that LST element. Maybe I would want to take that docs and say docs with markers and add some new marker to it that this doesn't make any sense really in this case but but i could add some additional marker on it that the that the parser doesn't know to add it may be significant to a particular recipe so a lot of options on spec to kind of customize the lst element either before or after the recipe run um, looking at the spec up here so this is back up to recipe spec there's what other options are available here that you can set the execution context. The execution context can be used to set all sorts of kind of like expectations up front. So I could say Maven execution context view 
that view uh, new in memory execution context here dot set, you know, um, Maven settings, for example. And I could say Maven settings dot parse, you know, paths dot gets my Maven settings dot XML. You know, so th th there's this way of kind of really changing the parser's behavior based on, you know, setting the execution context is going to be passed to the parser. Um, one thing that we really commonly do uh, as part of this is we have to change the parser itself to add class path entries. Let's delete a lot of the stuff here, kind of go back to a simpler form and change our what if we wanted to if i have like multi-map or something yeah so like let's look at multi-map from guava multi-map com google common collect so uh let's say i had a multi-map of string to integer and i wanted to say names dot put John one here. And let's say rather than changing job util list add, I was trying to instead change com.google.com.collect.multimap put. And we'll just, yeah, we'll keep this plus here. So if I were to execute this recipe right now, it fails and it fails because the test says that the package com Google common collect doesn't exist, but it does exist on my class path, right? I can create a multi-map right here. Um, so why is it that it's not available to the parser that's parsing this Java file here? Um, that I'm using in my test. We have to actually add that dependency to the, the recipe spec to make it available. So you can say java parser dot from java version dot class path. And here you can use this form where you just have to specify the artifact names. If I do command O here again in the IDE and I'm looking at multi-map, the artifact name will be the second part of this group artifact version coordinate. So com.google.guava is the group. Guava is the artifact name. 29.0-jerry is the version. So I can just say guava here. And now the guava library I can use in my unit test. And you can see this passes now. That's a basic introduction to rewrite test harness. Explore all the other options that are available on the recipe spec and the source spec, but those are the most common ones we use as we build up complex tests to do recipe refactoring. To learn more about Modern and Open Rewrite, check out our documentation.